locker room and then she kicked me out. Right, I understand. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, folks, uh, John, John has written a great book here. I like to read the back of it here. It says, in this book, you will learn the essentials of what it truly means to take up your cross and follow Christ daily in your everyday life through the Holy Spirit. You will learn everything from being lights to the world, forgiving others, and how Christianity is not a religion but a faith. It's a walk. It's a relationship. You will learn how to deal with giants, trials, and seasons of storms in your life. Preserving through persecution, being a new creation in Christ, and leaving your life of sin, the importance of daily repentance, the power of praying scripture to God, and finally, the gift of the praying in the Holy Spirit and how he works in your life and in your church today. This book will guide you on how to live your everyday life for Christ and with Christ in a very simple but also a deep read. I pray that everyone who reads this book will learn how to walk with Christ every day in every situation, no matter what may come your way through the love and power of the Holy Spirit. And there you can see it. You can get this book over at Amazon. It's $11.13. And I think it's a, uh, well, I can tell you, I've been reading it. It is a great read. And what inspired you, John, to write this? Honestly, um, I feel like Lord Jesus laid it on my heart to write it to both the adult um, the adults of uh, our faith, the Christian faith, but also the younger generation in particular, because I feel like this generation has been fed so much ungodly filth nowadays and in these end times and has been deceived and is growing up in a state of deceitfulness. And I felt like the gospel really needs to be reinforced uh, in the essentials to this young generation as they approach and go through their life. Um, in every aspect, uh, and like I said, you know, you, you read some of the the uh, different topics it covers, but um, it's very um, um, it's very it's deep read in some parts, but it's also a very simple read. I tried to be like I said, very simple for the younger generation to understand and hear, and to really you know learn what it means to to walk with Christ on a day to day basis in your life. And you know, John, was, uh, chapter nine, you have. Facing giants and trials and tribulations and seasons of storms in your life as you await God's blessing for your life. And you fill this uh, this entire book with a lot of scripture. You know, you keep putting scriptures in there along the along the way to really you don't want this just to be about your opinion, but you want this to be based on biblical truths. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there is about a hundred. I think I count them and there's about one hundred and fourteen scriptures in there. Now, when you say giants in people's lives, can you, you know, I mean, can you kind of uh, uh, give us a little understanding of that? Right. And what I mean by giants is roadblocks, uh, big mountains that you may have in your life that you don't think you're going to get through. Um, I'm, yeah, every day, I mean, if you think about back in the day, you know, when Israel was going through the wilderness and all the way up to the Canaan of the promised land of Israel, they had to face giants and so many roadblocks in their way. But God was faithful to knock down, take down every one of those giants and bring them to his, their blessing, which is not Israel. Um, but a lot of times we'll have giants and we'll face mountains or, or troubles in our life and we seem like you're, we're not going to get through. But which, in those instances, we need to know that God has a bigger plan. And sometimes you may be going through something in order for you to testify to somebody else about what God has brought you through when you think you when you thought you weren't going to make it another day or another second or another hour. Um, and I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a life uh, witness to that. And, um, I can testify to that fact. Um, I had a brain tumor when I was two years old, um, completely healed, no chemo. Um, I had, was diagnosed with OCD, anxiety disorder, uh, depression. I had just mountains and mountains of things in my life, but I'm here to tell you that God's delivered me through every single one of those things. And now I'm realizing it's, it was for me to not only write this book, but, to share my testimony with others so who may be going through the same thing and don't think they're going to make it, but know that they're in a bigger picture in God's story. Um, in other words, like, you know, I think it's first, this is it first Corinthians, uh, one about the consolation of God that Paul talks about. Yeah. Um, yeah. about, you know, how pretty much you go through some stuff, but we receive the consolation of God in other words that we can pretty much, you know, tell it to others about how we were consoled by God and our problems, um, in order to help others. So, so you, I was really writing this book just to uh, reinforce the essentials of the gospel, 
to uh, the older generation, but also to the new, younger generation, so they would be equipped with the tools they need spiritually to grow up and go through college and go through life and face all the deceitfulness and the ungodly filth that this generation is being just taught on a daily basis on these end times that we're in. And um, it's just, it's gotten out of hand, Pastor Paul. You know what? It's amazing. So you had a brain tumor at the age of two. I didn't know this. And so uh, was your parents uh, Christians and, and strong in their faith? What happened? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my parents, are, my whole family is very strong Christians and strong in the faith. Um, when I, uh, before I had the surgery, they had the whole church praying. Actually, what happened was they removed it. And then, um, like I said, no chemo. Um, but then they thought... Later, they thought that something had come back. There was something showing back up on the scan. And they're like, oh, no, we're going to have to go back in. Uh, we see something else that just popped up. Well, my parents had the whole church praying. All the saints were praying. And um, went back you know, a week later, and the doctor said, we don't know what we saw, but it's gone. Praise it just God. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's it's absolutely. I, I don't remember a lot of it from when I was little because obviously I was two years old. But before my parents had told me, you know, it's it's miraculous. In this, in this chapter, chapter 10, you talk about daily repentance and avoiding sin. You say uh, repentance is a very important part of our walk with Christ. Repentance is defined as a sincere regret or remorse. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, um, you know, I, I feel like it's, it's really important to daily repent and keep on a clean slate with God every day because you'll notice, and I, I think I, I wrote this in my book, but um, you notice when you when you sin, the moment you commit a sin, you feel that shame, you feel that regret, you feel that guilt um, set in. And at first, what that is, it's a good thing at first because it's it's the Holy Ghost convicting you to repent that sin to get it forgiven. But when you sit in your sins and you sit in, and do not repent the sins of God, then that shame, that guilt, and everything stays there, and you're not walking at your fullness in Christ and your potential in Christ you could be walking in. Um, and so I wanted to reinforce that because um, I think it's very important for people to keep a daily repentance and a daily clean slate with Christ uh, on a daily basis. Like they can walk and be at their fullest potential in Christ daily. Um, so because, you know, with unrepentant sins, it's not only are you not, you know, confessing before God and getting them forgiven, but you're, you're staying in that, that, that guilt state, if that makes any sense. Oh, absolutely. You're, you're walking in condemnation. You know, the, the scripture says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are, in, that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you're walking after the flesh, you will be in condemnation. You will feel guilt. You'll feel shame. You'll feel regret, remorse. That's the Holy Spirit really convicting us. Exactly. As you write in your book, you ex I read that chapter and you, re you wrote it excellently in the explanation. And uh, by the way, uh, also, you have in chapter four, a new creation, leaving your life of sin uh, when, when we're born again. Can you, so when did you get saved, John? Uh, tell us about that. I, I got saved when I was 10 years old. Uh, I got saved and baptized when I was 10 years old. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really, uh, I'm actually, I'm going back into uh, to school right now to uh, get my ministry degree. Uh, in order to get um, started finding a church to preach at. Um, but I uh, I didn't really feel the calling to preach until I was in my young or early 20s. Um, I'm 30 years old right now. Um, but I, uh, ever since I was born again, I was a little kid, I, I've always pursued God. And I had a great youth group growing up. And, I mean, that's really when I felt the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, we have what's called fire tunnels. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, Pastor Paul. Um but that's when I really felt the first the, the power of the Holy Ghost come up on me, and uh, in that youth group and in those retreats we used to have, and I got a got a load of the Holy Ghost and uh, got hooked on them ever since, <laughs> and never looked back. And uh, now I'm pursuing the ministry, uh, my passion for ministry. And so, are you a singer? I'm just going to ask you: Are you a singer also, John? I I do play six instruments. <laughs> See, now I had no clue of that. No clue of that. But I'm sitting here, and the Holy Spirit just came to me. This guy can sing. This guy can pick a guitar and sing. I guarantee it. And they just yes, sir. <laughs> Actually, I do. I play uh, six instruments. Guitar is my main one, but I play five others as well. Yeah. 
I love the Holy Spirit when he tells you things. Uh, brother, you are called to preach. There's no doubt about that. And uh, there will be churches opening up for you. And we, we, uh, we know of some that we may be able to get recommend and get you in. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, we, we, we encourage people to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says, go you into all the world and preach the gospel, folks. And Amen. so John's out here writing a book, taking up your cross. You know, everybody wants to talk about Jesus' cross, and he took his up. Right. All right. He did. He did his part. Believe me. And we don't have to pay that price. But he does expect us. To let every man take up his own cross and follow him. And a lot of times I think people need to understand that, you know, we're saved by grace through faith. And it's and as you know, John, but at the same time, God requires Christians to step up to the plate. I mean, there's that time of there's that time of getting saved, getting set free from sin, and you know, finally being delivered from the the clutches of darkness. But there's another phase in your Christian walk where God says, "Okay, now I need you to pick up the cross and do something." Is that what you're trying to encourage people to do in this book? That's exactly what I'm trying to encourage people to do and be fishers of men, as Christ has called us to be. Um, and exactly like you said, you know, stepping up to the plate, doing our part, and in, in spreading the gospel to the world. Um, I actually do. I think I, I think best I think you know this, but uh, I do run an online um, Bible prophecy ministry as well through Instagram. Yeah. it's called yeah. At the Last Days Seven Seven Seven, and um, and it's a uh, God's been moving in that as well. But I mean, it's really you know God's kind of hit me pretty hard with you know it's you need to get this gospel out. And you've been called to do this, and I feel like I've been called to do this by Christ, and um, I feel like you know by writing this book, it would encourage others to do the same. Um, whether they feel called to preach, but I, you know, in in whatever instance, but we're all at some point and to an instance ca called to preach the gospel to everyone we come in contact with, and we should never be ashamed of the gospel, as Romans one sixteen one sixteen says. We should always be proud and ready to share the gospel with anybody who may come in contact with us. Amen to that, John. There's no doubt about that. And he told us to be you know to uh to be you ready to give an answer the reason the hope that lies within exactly. us to always be ready and Amen. you know we're to preach the word to be instant in season out of season so that means whether people whether we feel it or whether they'd like it or whatever the situation you know we're <laughs> we're always ready okay i mean i have one guy say man i can't preach unless i got the crowds really with me i said then you wouldn't have been following elijah around yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, because they were trying to kill him everywhere he went. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> folks, it's, uh, uh, John, let me ask you. I mean, as you're looking at this, uh, again, people can get this book if they go to Amazon.com. They can find your book pretty easy, can't they, John? Yes, sir, and it's also on BarnesandNoble.com as well. So cool, so cool. So, so who'd, you, who'd you get? Uh, Christian Faith Publishers publishes for you? Yes, sir. It was cool. So when you wrote the book, how did you get them to uh, agree to publish your book? I mean, you just send it and they, they accepted it. What happened? Well, I sent it in uh, as a, you know, they gave you a literary agent. Um, I sent it in. She talked to me for a while, um, you know, and I sent her the manuscript. She goes, we have to have the manuscript until the publisher and the board can see it. She goes, the next step there is or there, that's going to take place is we're going to have to bring your book before the board of the company. And if they like it, then we'll publish it. Um, and so I was waiting that call for a while and I was praying, praying, God, please let this, you know, if it's your will, please let this book be published. Uh, not knowing what God was going to do with it at all. Uh, I was shooting, you know, I was just writing it, um, out of the, the, the uh, core of my heart, what Christ was laying on it. But so she, I got the call back and she said, uh, yep, yeah, you know, the board, you know, passed it, published it right away. Uh, and they gave me a different agent and, and walked me through the publication process and, uh, released and uh, so now here it is. Great job, great! I'm so proud of you. And uh, again, you can get this at Amazon.com or you can get it at Barnes and Noble. And uh, yes, find out more about what John is doing. Praise God, John! Proud of you. I really am, and I'm, I'm proud of the, this. Is what I love about our amazing online church. There is so many wonderful people who are involved in the gospel of Christ, leading people to Christ. John, you are one of those up and coming. Thanks, we we uh, appreciate your work. So God bless you. Keep up keep up the God good work. God bless you. God bless Sister Heidi in this online church. Amen. And get some coffee, John. Get the Are You Serious? I was about to get some before I came on here, but I was like, <laughs> I don't have time, I don't think. <laughs> All right. God bless you, John. We'll see you. God bless, brother. God right. bless. Bye-bye. There you go, folks. John T. Martin. Isn't that amazing? God's got so many wonderful, talented, wonderful people out there 
in this amazing online church. I think of Cassandra Stout. She's a great author. Uh, she's written a trilogy on the Nephilim and the end times. It's just phenomenal. And I mean, there's a bunch of them that have all kinds of talents, poetry. People who are uh, artists. Uh, there are folks out there that have all kinds of gifts. And I didn't know this guy could play music. No idea. But it came. I, I, I was ki kidding around saying he looked a little bit like Zach Brown. But then, but then the Lord said, no, 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 no. What you're seeing on him is the gift of musical talent. And so he said, yeah, I play six instruments. You heard him. Six instruments, including guitars is the main one. You know, it's amazing how the whole